I'm at the Whitechapel Art Gallery in London on the opening of the exhibition devoted to Thomas Struth, the great German contemporary artist. Struth is a member of that generation that was born in Germany just after the Second War. His concerns have been various and many. Here we see a series of pictures, the Paradise series, that he started in the late 1990s, which clearly ask questions about the state of the planet and where it's headed, and look at something original about the way that things used to be before we tampered with them. Struth is often described as being a member of the Dusseldorf School. What that means is that he was a pupil of the great German objective artists Bent and Hiller Bescher. He was also, at one time, a pupil of perhaps the greatest of all German contemporary artists, Gerhard Richter. His concerns, as I say, are various, and one of the things we very much hope to do is to ask him what connects the different subjects that he's tackled. Among the most important projects that Struth has undertaken, he's reverted many times to studying the way works of high culture impact upon us. Here, people are looking at Michelangelo's David, and the first thing you notice is that some even adopt the position of the sculpture itself. For others, it's simply another stop on their trip through Italy. The, the variations between transcendent emotion and simply trying to work out where the bus is going to wait for the next trip to the next museum are very problematic. What he's doing is saying there is the possibility of seeing great cultural moments in an ordinary life. Thomas Struth is always described as an objective photographer. For myself, I'm not so sure. Here we are still in the museum series, this time in Tokyo. This is a Delacroix that went to Tokyo. And the experience that he found here is a really very peculiar one, where people are looking at a famous painting as though they were at the movies. For myself, I think I'm beginning to see something where the, the wrestling match between the power of the great art itself and the experience of viewing it is clearly no longer quite a neutral account. By the time you get to the great self-portrait, here, Albrecht Dürer's self-portrait, Struth has allowed himself to creep into the picture. That figure on the right-hand side, we're told, is him. That's the artist. So the crowd has disappeared. What you have now is just the great cultural artifact that we're supposed to be looking at and some hint at the strange power of the experience of looking, the experience of being absorbed by it. And as the series came to its conclusion, this is the one that was intended originally to be the last in the series, the great Vermeer in the National Gallery in London. By the time we get here, we're looking at something where the crowds have disappeared. Only the power, the aura of the painting itself, is all that remains. This spotlight of light around it, this awkward sense that the corner is so still and so peaceful, and that something has happened to us as viewers. We're a far cry from the great crowd of gawpers in front of the David in Florence. Objectiveness is a strange thing, because when you think about it, that doesn't exist. As soon as the human opinion and uh, 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 interpretation comes in, it's always subjective. And I choose the subject matter that interests me and that are uh, here in the center of my heart or my, you know, my thinking. So in that respect, it's uh, a quite subjective choice. I'm making. These are among the earliest pictures in the show. Struth in Dusseldorf, these are from the late 70s, already beginning to explore the fabric of society. These aren't ar architectural pictures as such, although they're clearly made in the street. They're really about how people forced to get along with each other will do. If you look here in particular, the old pre-war architecture is punctuated by these bits of new architecture where a solution has been found to a problem in the development of the city. The symmetry became one of his hallmarks, a kind of symmetry which isn't symmetrical. It's a pattern, but people solve it the way they can. And he's taken that right through his career, and he's still doing something very similar with the new beehives of the Far East. In recent years, like a lot of artists and photographers, Thomas Struth has been turning his attention to technology. I think what he's looking at in very short words is that there is some notion that if only we could get there, the perpetually receding horizon of technological advance would find solutions to all of our problems. This behind me, although nobody ever recognizes it at first, is in fact the space shuttle, one of the great technological metaphors of them all. 
And even in a picture like this, which I personally like very much, it's perfectly clear this is not just a tangle of wires, this is a tangle of people. Thomas has this very precise and very unique vision that he brings to um, the medium. There's a very particular, very distinct and discernible formal quality. I feel on the one hand space is created and on the other hand space is um, collapsed. And one of the things that is of course very fascinating now about this is that the images aren't digitally manipulated, that he uses a large um, format plate camera and really takes in a way a very old-fashioned um, photograph. I think that the pictures uh, stand in their own right and I'm yeah, for, you know, sometimes I'm being told you know uh, like aren't the message is a bit too big or somebody said you yeah, I mean the, the like the aspirations or the ambitions are as big as the pictures but uh, for me it's sort of like a starting point you know, to mobilize myself and then of course the, the, the pictures are out in the world and it, it happens quite often that people see other things in them which of course is uncontrollable and I don't mind. There are many pleasures in this exhibition of Thomas Struth. The first and most obvious of them is, is visible behind me. This is by no means the biggest picture in the exhibition, but it's absolutely huge. And some of these pictures invite the viewer to dive in and linger over the details in a way that is its own particular pleasure. Uh, the exhibition isn't arranged thematically. Lots of pictures bounce off each other in surprising and challenging ways. And that will be, I think, what most people will take from the whole experience. This idea that pictures which were made for one particular purpose can have echoes that are very different when seen against strange neighbours.